The library is having this, ga this wonderful gathering with this fabulous food and this marvelous music and all of you to thank you for all you do for the library. And the story, and it is a story, it's not really a talk, is nothing more than my thank you to the library. It's called Hometown Library. I'm going to tell you a story about my grown-up library, although the Bainbridge Island Library is a story of many stories and of many generations and a community that built and then rebuilt this learning center. For me, it's a story of survival, of renewal, and of appreciation. You see, I fell into sort of a hard patch when the century turned. Maybe you know what that's like. Sometimes we fall in those ruts in the road, get up to our knees, life dares us to get up again. Well, one day my own fog lifted, and I noticed this beautiful garden gate by the library. And there were all these masons and artists and builders hard at work. The expansion and landscaping was an all-out Bainbridge Island effort. And that's how this library was built in the first place with bake sales, quilt raffles, the rotary auction, and what's more, a wildly divergent group of neighbors were banding together to revitalize it. I didn't understand all that yet. All I knew was that inside this airy building were books of fact and fiction calling to me. And there were librarians who could find any book they could find articles. They could help you make a request to order books that they didn't have if it wasn't on the shelf or if it wasn't available at another branch of the Kitsap Regional Library. These librarians welcome visitors like guests. And if you can hear my accent, you know I was raised with that sort of, y'all come on in now, <laughs> hospitality. Well, they invited me to join one of the book groups or take a class at the New Fields End Writing School. And when I looked lost, they pointed me in the direction of a roundtable discussion led by neighborly folks or sent me to shop for books at the Friends of the Library sale. It confused me at first. A public library selling books. <laughs> and then I learned that the money goes to maintain the building, pay taxes, operational stuff necessary for the 200 people using the library every hour. Danish population is only 23,000 and 85% of us hold library cards to read, listen to music, use the computers, discuss Tosca, plumbing, or the school play. Go figure. Folks who live on the island lecture about different subjects. Dave Gooderson is in faded jeans and a corduroy jacket, talks to writing groups, people who are hopeful writers. You know, the Bainbridge teacher who grew up to write Snow Falling on Cedars. An energetic speaker electrifies her audience in the conference room. Rebecca Wells, author of The Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, and in answer to that frequently asked question, yes, all Southerners are crazy. <laughs> and Rebecca tells her group, Anything can happen at any time. I don't know who all of the famous authors are. I know we have a lot of them and teachers. And they sort of come here and talk and remain humble, as if their own success is a surprise to them. Well, every week, I return with an armload of borrowed books, walk through the perennial garden to the slotted box. And then one Friday, I nearly fell over this woman weeding pincushion flowers and directing an army of wheelbarrows. That mud speckled gardener was Ann Lovejoy, noted author, teacher, founder of the Friday Tidies, the volunteer gardeners. There's also the fern and the haiku garden of mammoth rocks, waterfalls, otter sculptures, and 17 syllable poems silk screened on tiles of stone. It's the work of hundreds of volunteers who blended traditional Japanese gardens with local influence under the respectful garden guidance of Junko and Chris, owners of Bainbridge Gardens. When I first moved here, Junko gave me 
a much greater understanding about history and a love of gardening. And I knew it was just like him to unite poetry and art under a northwest sky. The Haiku Garden honors that first generation of Japanese who endured the hardships of World War II, relocation camps, the loss of homes and farms. Well, over the years, I have cut my own path through this library. This is my route. I gather a few CDs and now DVDs. And first, I look at the rack waiting to be reshelved to learn what all of my neighbors are reading. <laughs> how to's rate right high these days. How to paint a room, darn socks, cook Mexican vegan, learn quick books, or even how to build a treehouse. Susie Orman has been a big hit recently. I guess her advice on building wealth will never go out of fashion. Well, then I shoot over to the poetry section, return via playwrights and essays. I always go past the gardening because there's always so much to learn about gardening. Then I scrutinize the librarian's pick of the week because, you know, I find gems over there I'd never know otherwise. Then I get over to the fiction section. God bless that lady who buys that fiction. <laughs> and I loved it when the whole island was reading. Remember when we all read Steinbeck's Cannery Row? And then they went on to read about food. And I said, no, I don't need anything, any more information about food in my life. I need less information about food. Well, I've been traveling that route for several years now. And it occurs to me I've done a lot of checking out. But what have I checked in? Over half million books are borrowed every year from this library. And I do my personal part to keep that total as high as possible. <laughs> if I had to buy 10 books a week, in 52 weeks, that could easily amount to $12,000. Whoa, it's time I thought about giving back. And I don't know if I'll join the Gardening Friday Tidies or the Friends of the Library Booksellers or just what I might lend a hand doing. But I occupy space in this haiku cathedral of light and loam that sheltered me through some very dark winters. I should think of something. And the story seems like a mighty small offer compared to the monumental gifts of all of you. So I'll have to think of what I can do for this little library where I found a community's heart volumes of wisdom, and the will to turn another page. Thank you all very much.